Howdy folks, welcome back. Once again, it is Donnie. In a previous video, we took a look at the Linux file system and we saw how the Linux directory structure is set up. In this video, I'd like to take a look at the different types of files that we have in Linux. We have seven different types of files in Linux. The first one that we want to look at is the regular files. So what is a regular file? Well, a regular file is just really any type of file that a normal user is going to access in day-to-day -day use. So a regular file can be an executable file for a program. It can be a text file, word processor file, spreadsheet file, video file, graphics file, really any type of file that a user is going to access in just his day-to-day -day routine is going to be considered as a regular file. We can come over here and we can do an ls-l. We can see by the dash in front of the permission settings that these are regular files. So that's what that dash means, is that these are regular files. The next type of file we have is the directory. And yes, a directory in Linux is considered as a type of file. So we can come over here then, and we can see that we have a D in front of those listings there, indicating that these are directories. And of course, we have a nice color coding here going, which is set up by default. So the nice pretty blue indicates that that is a directory as well. But there may be certain times when we won't have that pretty color coding. So to illustrate that, let's go over here. And we'll look at another virtual machine, which is just a plain old text mode machine. And we'll do ls-l for the Etsy directory. And with the text mode machine, you see everything is just running up off the screen. And we don't have the nice pretty scroll bars in order to scroll back up. So in order to deal with that, we'll just do a ls-l Etsy, and we'll pipe that into less so that we can have our pager going. So now we have everything here. We can page up, page down, like so. But the problem is when we pipe this into the less utility, we lose our color coding. So in these instances, we have that D, which tells us when we have directories. And uh, so that's a very handy feature. The next types of files that we want to look at are the device files, which will represent the types of devices that we have attached to our system. We have two types of device files. We have character device files and block device files. The only place that you ever find device files will be in the dev directory, which just happens to be where we are. We do an ls-l. You'll see that we have lots of different device files in there. We have our character devices, which begin with a C, and our block devices, where we have a B. Our block devices are going to be our random access devices, such as hard drives. And you can see that we have SDA is our first hard drive. And then we have SDA1 and SDA2, which are the two partitions on that SDA drive. We also have an SDB drive and an SDC drive, which have not yet been partitioned. And the SD device can also represent things like a USB memory stick, which you plug in. But the SD device, it's a block device, it's going to be some sort of random access device. And then we have our character devices, which will be our sequential access devices. So for example, our terminals are going to be streaming type of devices. You just take the data stream as it comes. You can't do anything about it. And then we have our serial ports, which are also streaming devices. 
and we have our console and lots of other streaming devices as well. The next file type is the local domain socket, which will enable communications between operating system processes. So we can go back into the dev directory and we can take a look at one of those. So here we have a local domain socket and you see that we have an S there at the start of the permission settings. And this is called the log socket. And all that does is it takes information from the different processes that are running on our Linux system and it feeds that information to our log keeping service so that the information can be put into the system log files. I also need to point out that unlike your device files, the domain socket files can be found in other places besides just that dev directory. Here by looking through the entire file system with the find utility, looking for socket files, we see that we have socket files in lots of other places as well. The next type of file we have is the named pipe, which just does nothing except help out with network communications. Again, here we use the find utility to find the named pipes on our system. And you can see that we know what they are because we have a P in front of the permission settings. The last type of file we want to look at is a symbolic link. A symbolic link is like a shortcut. So it's going to point to either another file or to a directory so that you can either access that file or directory from some other location or by some other name. So here in our dev directory, we do see that we have some symbolic links here. And we can tell what they are because we have an L at the front of the permission settings. And we also see that we have this symbolic link name right there, which is pointing to a file, which is way on down in the proc directory someplace. But the dev directory is not the only place where we have symbolic links. We can also come over here and we'll use our find command again in order to search through the entire file system to find symbolic links. And since there are a whole bunch of them, we'll just pipe the output into less. And we can see that we have a whole bunch of symbolic links which are already there for us when we install the operating system. And they're there for various different reasons. We can also create our own symbolic links if we want to but we're not going to get into that right now because we're going to have another video on nothing but creating links. So then these are, are the seven types of files in Linux. We've covered all of them. Regular files, directories, character device files, block device files, local domain sockets, named pipes, and symbolic links. So be sure you have a good understanding of them and it will help you out in your Linux administration duties. That's all for now. We'll see you in the next video. If you like the videos, be sure to subscribe and like, and we'll see you around.